right? Because he's moved the bishop, so now I want him to move the bishop again. And queen to c1 is a very good sign for me, because it means I'm going to get the dark square bishop, which is absolutely not a bishop you should ever give. <laughs> no. So now we get this really easy development. Bishop out, bishop out. Knight f6, for example. Holy smokes. What's the idea here? So wait a minute. I take it. This guy's been watching too much, uh, too much Smith Mora or something. So I take it, and what happens next? Okay, but it's just a check. I don't even see the next move. I, I was thinking I can play king f8 just like completely safe, but honestly, I can also play knight e7. Like I don't, I don't even need to play uh, king f8. The problem is king f8 almost looks better than knight e7. So I might willingly move my king here. But yeah, I was just looking at this. I was like, that doesn't really scare me that much. So... All right, let's play uh, what looks like the safest looking move. Most obvious, but believe me, I wasn't too upset playing king f8 there. It allows my rook to come in to hit the queen right away. My knight comes to f6, which is a much better square than, than e7. The only advantage of knight e7 is obviously like, then I can castle, but I was weighing the options there and it wasn't exactly clear to me that castling was that worth it. But yeah, he's down a piece here. He doesn't have a follow-up for this sack. Um, he just kind of threw it in there. Which, you know, to some degree I respect. But it definitely looked a little <laughs> unplanned, that's for sure. Okay, I think it's time for, for a castling type of move here. This one, I can't deny, looks pretty safe and pretty good. But we're gonna castle kingside. It's the standard, standard way. G6, also f5. Um, personally, I like I like f5 here, just because this knight needs attention, so he kind of has to walk back into the pin. Queen e5 loses, so I think f5 is a little bit tricky. Yeah, he takes it, but it's not exactly. Uh, it's not exactly doing anything here. Rookie eight next. We got all the pieces working. No, we're not gonna move that night. Not gonna be that nice. Now. Now everything's falling. He ended, he ended without any pieces. GG. Time out. Oh, we got a great uh, a great game here. So B5, this is all standard. Time out. Oh, there should be no surprises so far, right? E4, C5. E6 is always our second move. Basically, the, the rule is that, you know, if someone plays C3 to play D4, then you need to do something like Knight F6 to attack the E-pawn, right? You never want to be playing a position where... They play d4, you take, and they take with a pawn. That's always, always wrong. Unless you've already, you know, played knight f6, and then it's a different position. But anytime someone has two pawns like this, like, you made a mistake. So it means that when someone plays d4, you always take it. Because, yeah, if they have a c pawn there, then you've already done something else wrong. But the point of the Sicilian is you always take whenever they don't have a pawn to recapture. And most of the time when people play d4, it's like this. And they'll be taking back with the knight or the queen. So you always capture. And always get the knight out next. Always the queen out after that. At this point, you shouldn't have touched your a-pawn yet. And after you move your queen, then you move your a-pawn. Here we go. Bishop here. And what is a6 support and prepare? Well, the move b5. Surprise, surprise. That's going to be the next move almost all the time. And then here I would say bishop b7 is like the main move. 
uh, in terms of our normal setup. But as I was explaining, just because of our opponent's kind of aggression with e4 and f4, I decided to show you guys another pretty cool idea. Knight a5, intending knight to c4, and it really throws people off. My opponent not only like took ages to think here, but you know he did this, and then he gave me his dark square bishop. So he didn't react well at all to what we were doing, and all we did was develop, and the guy just went crazy, right? With uh, knight d5, totally unnecessary. But if I was gonna continue another way, it would just be bishop b7, rook c8, maybe knight f6. Right, cakes, and then knight e7 to c6. That's another idea. And of course, takes, bishop takes, sometimes might drop the f pawn as well. So white needs to be careful there. But the timeout is an opening where you, you do many of the same things. Your setup's important. e6, a6, b5, knight, queen, bishop, rook. You often develop the queen side before you touch any of the king side. And the rest of our setup would be like that. Maybe throw in the move d6, stop e5. That's pretty much it. All right, with the white pieces, as we know, playing c4, but ultimately sticking with the same themes for the opening. So like d5 will take, knight takes, right? And as you guys can see, it's pretty much just the reverse. It's still pretty much a Sicilian here. All right, let's take with the queen. I want to play, I want to play a, a setup very close to our usual system. Here we go. So this should be very familiar. It's just uh, everything we've been looking at flipped around. E4 would be nice, wouldn't it? Okay, so I mean he's really, really protecting the, uh, the diagonal there. Fair enough. I think we're gonna drop the queen back now, because now I see this as like, okay, there's truly not any point in being on that diagonal. So maybe here with bishop d3, we can make some more threats. There's always bishop c4 with check. I'm actually not giving the check right now because I'm trying to bait my opponent into playing bishop g4 and then queen c4 will actually win the entire piece so 97 anyone want to guess what my opponent's planning I think it's that one hint hint right this is people love to play this move to attack the queen okay so we got him playing f5 which is just a blunder e5 pawn is lost we can throw in a check on this diagonal so I have things to consider. This is just lost, but I'm also sitting here wondering, wait a minute, uh, should I be maybe giving check and then going knight g5? And I think the answer is gonna be no. Queen e8 covers everything no matter what. So let's just take the material and get out of there. Takes, takes queen d5 would be a nice little blunder for me. Queen d5 looks like it's hitting two things at once but there is bishop c4 coming. So here, I don't think it really deals with uh, the situation. So queen d5, bishop c4 is still gonna be an issue. But now I'm like, I'm thinking this is just nice and easy. Just run that h pawn up the board. Bishop c4 is an idea, knight d5. No, I'm, I'm convinced. Also convinced queen d5 is gonna happen, but in the meantime, let's move this pawn up. Okay, good moves from my opponent. I think uh, we'll bring this bishop back. Queen c3, for example, gets on the long diagonal really nicely here. It's actually only one move to defend and it's rook f7. The problem is it's a very logical move. So let's keep going here. I'm going to play that and open up the diagonal and then queen c3 will be really strong. I 
Again, probably another good move. Make a baby threat here. Knight d5. I'd like to keep my queen on this diagonal, so you'll probably see me making moves that allow that to happen. Rook to g3 is really tempting. I'm a little conscious of f4, that move. But otherwise, feeling pretty good. I also like the move f3. It takes control of some good squares here. Mm -hmm. Let's go here. King f2. I can move this bishop back. For some reason I like this king f2 move for the moment. Yeah, I don't mind this uh, this interaction. We'll trade. Bring the rook up. Bishop back. Oh, I thought maybe we could tempt him into a blunder there. Now, I think this is a blunder by him. Remember, bishop d3 was covered, so... Now hopefully we can uh, use the two bishops to finish off this game. Bishops do a funny job, like just, you know, keeping the king boxed in here. So with his pawns and my bishops like that, he only really had like a couple squares to shuffle to, which was a little, made it a little easier to pre-move and promote to victory. 1300s are no joke. This was a great game, I thought, because we really got to see a lot of the same Taimanov ideas. We're basically double dipping. With the white pieces, we're not guaranteed a Taimanov. It's an opening for black in the Sicilian, but here we saw all the ideas on display, which was awesome. And it is e4, so we're able to play c5, e6, time on of time, and knight c6. So what's our next move? We should remember it's with the queen. Will we see a knight show up on b5? It hasn't yet. Still. All right, a6, always the next idea after queen c7. So immediately dealing with this. b5 is gonna be our next move for the most part. And okay, we actually see a move that I would say is kind of advanced for my opponent's level. But hey, these are the chess.com 1300s. These are the people I've been talking about. So after this move, there's a few different things that we can do, but this is actually a pretty, I would say pretty high level move. And obviously it, you have to have seen this before because why the hell would you randomly bring your queen out in this opening? It makes no sense. The whole point is actually to play queen g3 and trade the queens and be a little bit better in the end game. So first of all, I'm just gonna go straight ahead with our usual plan b5, nothing different from my end so far. Bishop d3, already not really what you're supposed to do in this position. I think queen g3 is kind of more standard. But okay, we'll leave it for the moment. I'm just going to go bishop b7. Not going to complicate things yet. We'll see what he wants to do here. Very curious which way he's going to castle. All right, so he goes, he goes with the kingside castle. Surprise, surprise. 
All right, well, hey, Knight F6. I have no fear doing this move because there's no E5 happening. Like I can put my Knight on E5 nice and easy. Knight takes E6 and yeah, we definitely have a, a choice here, but as usual, I'm gonna stick to some of our rules here. I'm gonna go with the queen. We always want to set up this battery when we can. E4, also uh, an idea here. Yeah, B4 is uh, <laughs> it's looking like more than an idea. Remember, booting that knight, and we've got so much pressure on this E-pawn that as soon as he moves the knight somewhere, and by the way, somewhere, Probably gonna be one of these squares. Knight takes e4, unleashing the queen on g2. This looks very unpleasant. Yeah, I was about to say for those scared of knight d5, uh, take solace in two things. Number one, knight takes and queen takes just wins a pawn. A clean pawn, so like you have nothing to worry about there. But I can also play pawn takes and queen takes. And I'm actually looking around here for a move with the bishop that KOs me, and I don't see it. So I'm gonna call the bluff. I can take with the knight or the queen, honestly, now that I'm thinking about it. But sure, I'll take with the queen, and it's like, I get it. That looks freaky, but I'm threatening me. I don't really know what. You're intending here. There's a discover check, and in fact, there's lots of them, but I'm just not convinced that any of them actually win the game. Okay, Bishop C5. Now, Queen E6 immediately forces like a queen trade from what I can see. So that looks completely winning, but I'm tempted. I'm more tempted by this move. I have to be honest with you guys. So I'm gonna go king here against my better judgment. It's not the best move, but it's more tempting. The only move that white should play that's reasonable is this. Forces this, queen e8 is not mate. And remember, we still got this mate threat, which he probably needs to play f3 against. And then I'm gonna go bishop to uh, c5. So this move is kind of forced, but look how quickly we're going to get developed. Bishop c5, trade, all with check, rook e1, like everything just goes, goes, goes. The best move in that position previously was probably queen e6. Trades the queens because his bishop's hanging, but this one requires him to be a little more accurate, that's all. He can make some mistakes too. And like I said, he can make some mistakes. Well, you know... He wasn't quite mating me. Rook c1, I see his plan. It's very slow. Nothing is faster than queen g2 mate. GG. Just gotta call the bluff. I mean, look, we, we did nothing unusual in the opening, right? b5, we should be seven, all our usual stuff. Knight f6, takes, queen takes, all as usual, right? And then here, I mean, I'm just threatening b4, so I would say a3 is a pretty normal move. And if we keep following our, our rules for how to put our pieces, I would say rook c8 makes sense. Bishop d6 even makes some sense. And even bishop c5 to maybe trade some pieces there. So rook here, queen here, d6, bishop e7, castle. That's all we want to do. That's all we want to do. So I, I was pretty happy with... Uh, with the opening, even though this was an unorthodox move in the opening, and it's not a bad one, it's actually a really high level move. Even though it might be a move that you haven't seen before, if you stick to what we've talked about, you still get a pretty fine position, right? We talked, to, of course, b 5s the idea, bishop b7, right? Knight f6, rook c8, all would have been fine moves, and then whenever the knight captures, we take back with the queen. Keep it simple. And then, yeah, my opponent played this, and we were able to unleash a tactic, Knight d5 is a whole heck of a lot of BS. And we just have an amazing position here. So, white's best idea was probably f3. I mean, you have to do it. 
Then bishop c5, he's got to take. King's got to move if you want to keep the queens on the board, but then like rook e8, right? Queen's got to move. And at this point, we can put our king wherever we want, but we're up a full piece. We're fully mobilized. Looks like a great position. So starting with c4, as usual, can't really uh, ever force uh, force the position, but we can still develop our pieces more or less the way we're used to. All right, bishop there. Happy to trade with you. Oh, happy to play b4 against you. I mean, look, you just gave me two moves for free there. Thank you kindly. Thank you kindly. All right, knight b5, there's c6. It doesn't quite work. What moves do we like here? I'm actually kind of interested in this. Feels like it really clamps down. Like, he wants to play c5 or something. It's not that easy anymore. a6, we can go there. And yeah, knight, knight there, I was thinking, okay. Now we've got, we've got squares for our knight. Not super easy to uh, dislodge the pieces. And a4, also knight c6. Actually, now that I think about it, knight a2 is <laughs> maybe even kind of attractive here. Let's stick to what we were planning on. If you want to take me, I'm going to take back. Oh, a5. It's an interesting move. It's like, he's tempting me to take him, but I'm not sure taking is the best. Knight c6 also, the queen has to move because I don't think you can capture. Lose that afterwards. All right, I will fall for it, as Yasser likes to say. Taking, then this knight is hit. Bishop falls, or at least lose a pawn at the very, very least. Queen e8 looks more or less like the move. Knight e5 drops the knight. Knight b8 can be played, but I will take and recapture with the queen. Yeah, so queen d6. Unfortunately, life is not going to be easy for you here. I'm going to take this, so it's doubled pawns literally everywhere. Isolated, doubled pawns, you name it. It's going from bad to worse. I think c7 is very tempting. Knight a6 can be played. Oof, it is not looking good here for my opponent. But I'm still wondering the best way to play. Let's go here. King e2. And I, I think, strangely enough, just want to go here and double up my, my own rooks. Okay, now we got the rooks doubled. Okay, now we stop d4. Starting to get really good for me. Because now he's going to have trouble moving at all. It's going to be like... Okay. Now we're all... <laughs> oh, it's getting really tough now. Black's running out of moves. Like, period. Just on the board.
All right. So now that the Rook's not there, I think we can move again. Bishop here to target this. King f4 ideas. Check. This will be checkmating pattern actually. So like rook b2 does get mated. Can't go rook c8 for that pattern, but we still have this one. GG. Structural euphoria. I mean this this game what didn't have too many shades of the time on of, but at least uh, the way we developed the pieces for the most part was was very similar. But yeah, this was uh, not quite it because re remember the pawn is usually on e5, and when Black plays d5, they take with a piece. Here they were able to take with a pawn, so it's always going to be a little different. E4. All right, we got the Sicilian, we got the Taimanov, we're all set up here. Knight c6, and knight captures. Well, we have an easy thing here because we just don't want to allow the queen trade, so we know we're taking with the b-pawn, and that our very next move is going to be d5. It's so common, people play knight c6, they take on d5, they give this check, right? How many times have we had this position? I feel like this is a really, really common one. Okay, knight here, bishop e7, and just... All these moves are, you know, they're always going to be playable one after the other. Okay, takes. Ah, yes. The ever tricky knight d5. So wait a minute. I thought after knight d5, that there were some issues here with the position. Well, let me think. If pawn takes, oops. If bishop takes, okay, check. But there's something else that my opponent's not... I feel not fully accounting for. So bishop takes b2, we can play, and just hits the rook. Kind of looks like an issue. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now rook there. Queen check at any point. You have to remember that as soon as you go queen check and you take here, there's always going to be knight c7. So you're not as much of a genius as you think. Doesn't mean it's bad, but I didn't want to deal with b4, for example. So now, queen check. Not really sure how he's going to get out of the check, but maybe c3. I don't know. We could take it. Here, maybe king there. And then I could go bishop takes. You know, might run into knight c7. But I, I think we should end up fairly okay after queen check. So let's start with the check. Could also just castle, right? That's always like... Nice and safe, but I decided to make it more complicated. And remember, we don't want to do this because of knight c7. So at this point, I think bishop takes is, uh... yeah, I had a feeling he was going to do this, guys. Now there's a reason that I took on b2, so he couldn't play b4. Because now he wants to take and play knight c7. Now that was a great idea one move ago. Now it's check. <laughs> Oof. A rude awakening. Now it's check. So let's make one thing clear because I'm I'm telling you guys about the time out of. It's from Black's perspective. So obviously, I don't want to walk you guys into a position that's just bad. And tell you guys that it's good and have you play it so remember i said this is like one of the most obvious this is a really really common way people play you play knight c6 they're like oh, i'll take it whatever and then they develop normally you play d5 like, i'll take it whatever they're like oh i can develop a check boom done they play queen here they're actually threatening knight d5 right they have some ideas okay knight here bishop g5 bishop e7 now, I've said, as soon as you play this line, after you play B takes, you play D5, you take with a C pawn, you block a check, and you develop your knight, bishop, and castle. That's what I've always said about this line. So easy to play. But after doing all those exact moves, it does look like 
wait a minute, aren't we walking into like some weird position here? And you're not wrong. This is a funky position, but it's definitely not bad for black. Definitely not bad. First of all, if you want to not deal with it, pawn takes is available for you. You'll still be quite okay. But bishop takes, let's say white takes here, no problem. After knight takes d5, you have two options. You have the move that maybe we would have considered, queen a5. Uh, but after queen a5, I was looking at this and I was like, okay, this is a little bit, that was a little bit weird, right? d4 gets funky, because now queen takes, there's knight c7. So I thought, okay, I'll take this first. Now rook b1, queen a5 check. And again, my opponent needs to make a decision. It's not that easy to play. You put your king on the wrong square, we're gonna just take the bishop. So king there, I took here. What needed to happen was knight c7. After knight c7, I could either take and allow both my bishops to drop, or I could move my king. Knight takes b5, and we continue from there. The black is gonna be okay in these lines. Black's gonna be a bit better. I'm not leading you guys down a path where black is just unhappy. So even though it looks like white is winning a pawn with bishop takes f6 and knight d5, that is not, not the case. c4. Of course, we're looking for, you know, the reversed Sicilian type of position, but we're not guaranteed it. Feel like we're really encouraging e5 but he still didn't play it damn all right yeah there's not gonna be uh not gonna be much we can do here because he's gonna play this move and you know when we take he's gonna be threatening d4 so i feel like we uh i feel like we can't really get the position we want from like we can't get our reverse sicilian kind of position so we're going to have to adjust. Go here. We're gonna have to play d4, I think, after d5. Okay, it's, it's gonna give us another uh, another moment here. Yeah, it's it, it'll be d4 after d5. If he doesn't play d5 and he goes for something more like that, then. I think we can still dream of getting a Taimanov type of setup here. Yeah, here we go. This is the same as if we took and they took with the knight. So this is good. We've got our, our setup after all. Knight on g6 is, I swear, that's gonna, gonna make me play something like h4, h5. It's too tempting not to. E5 is aggressive, that's for sure. So we know that the bishop's coming here next. Bishop here, bishop there, h5, knight e5. Yeah, I think let's just put it on e2. h6 is nice because it loosens up the whole diagonal. It just feels, makes everything feel a little more sketchy. Okay, the reason I think knight takes here is not quite the move is I'm going to take back. And I can throw this move in in between. So instead of taking here, I think I can just take here. You know, because I'm threatening to take a rook and make a queen. So obviously, you must react with rook g8. And I will take here. Rook g7. I think knight e4 will be pretty nasty to deal with. So let's see how he handles this. Yeah. Queen c6, I think should win here. Yep. Now we can take this because remember the queen is doing two, two drops here. It's guarding the rook and it's guarding f6. And although it looks like our rook's being attacked. We take this one with a check. And may as well just trade. Make make our life easy. We're up a full rook. 
King up. Maybe bring the rook into c6. Attacking two pawns. Can't defend both of them with only one rook, unless it was there. Even then, I don't think that would help very much. There's no way he can trade. Uh, trade the rook, and actually we're able to force him to trade with us. Which is a little bit funny, but we're taking the only two only two spots that the rook could go, and we, we actually kind of corner him, force him to exchange. We'll use the king to deal with the pawn, and then everything else should fall into place. Let's take. I think we should be good from here. Let's give a check. Force the king back. GG. Force the king to the side of the board and got the easy mate there. Okay, so we kind of did get a timeout of setup. Just because he took us on c4, which is, yeah, you know, now we've got it. So all the pieces did end up exactly where we're used to them going. Um, and the same way in the timeout of, if I saw knight on g3, yeah, I would play h5. This is really common. When you've got the pieces all aimed this way, uh, h4, h5 is not just, oh, like some aggressive nonsense. It can really be the, the best move in the position. Absolutely. So just to give you guys an idea... Just to give you guys an idea, might not believe me. In this position, the move h4 is the best move, right? And it's at the very least up there with the top three. So hopefully that uh, reaffirms what we're talking about here, right? h4, you, you want to send the h pawn. The knight is uncomfortable. If you get to h6, as I did, it opens up the bishop really, really nicely. So it's a great way to play. It's not always just nonsense. It works really well with the diagonal pieces you have lined up and supporting the knight. And if black castles there, of course it gets even worse. So it's just a nice, nice pawn thrust to have in your arsenal. All right, e4, we're going to continue with our Sicilian here, the Taimanov, knight c6. Knight takes, all right, pawn takes. And we've talked about how d5 is our next move. Take with the b pawn, we don't want to allow the queens to trade. d5, and he takes, we just take back with the pawn. But even if he doesn't uh, trade us, you know, our moves will look more or less the same. So knight here, okay, now he trades, that's fine. Take back, bishop here, bishop here, all right, this whole this whole line is pretty much known. D5, take with the uh, B pawn, take with the C pawn. Knight F6, Bishop B7, Castle. So up till here, like, I think everything should, should really make sense. Okay, let's maybe bring a Rook out. Okay. Well, I'm not gonna lie. You've got me looking at Bishop B4. It just looks a little uncomfortable. Queen d2, d4. E3 is just big weaknesses on the dark squares here. But it's like, how can we complain about this opening? Nice pawn structure, safe king. Should be fairly obvious where the pieces go. Okay. All right, guys, you ready? I'm gonna fall for the trap here. So the trap is that after winning a piece, our opponent loses a piece and then wins a piece. So after winning a piece, 
our opponent loses another piece and then wins a piece. Wait. <laughs> the math isn't mathing. Okay. Instead of that, he is giving up even more material. It's got me a little concerned for him here. Okay. Let's attack the bishop. Bishop takes here, then we're of course we're happy to, to take back. No doubt about it. This looks like a 94 position. We do not care about losing pawns, not at all. At this point, we're just, uh, yeah, please take me, basically, is what we're saying. Take me, um, because, I mean, look at the remaining pieces, right? I just have an extra, I have an extra everything. Extra rook. Feels good. And I got an escape square. And it's on a light square. Man, everything's going right. Light square is good just because my opponent's got a dark square bishop. Okay. I mean, queen d5 is obvious but there is a nice little uh nice little move there for my opponent so it's not the most it's not the simplest i actually really like the move e5 here looks a bit funny but if the bishop takes lots of pieces can reach the e-file queen takes same deal and i like shutting that bishop out hmm All right, we'll bring that guy all the way over. Now we're threatening mate, and f3 is no longer possible. Oops. Well, it's possible, but it's also not. Queen takes, 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 king f2. We will technically lose material there. Queen d4, best to play by the book here. I like f5. Let's wedge that guy in and now bring the rook up. Rook here or rook here. We just want to take this. Yeah. I think we just go make a queen here. That was a big win. That got a high rated guy there. Almost 1500. I think we used the timeout off pretty well here. Like, very common line. We've seen it time and time again, even today. They take, they take the knight. They develop normally, you play d5. And okay, they might take right away, they might develop. But the point is they will take eventually. You take back with this pawn, your pieces go like that, you castle. That already gets you like 10, 12 moves into the game, no problem. Right? H6, open file for your rook, semi open file, attack a pawn, and already after b3, it's like after bishop b4, my opponent has uh, some issues to attend to. So, this is a, a good, good structure to understand how to play. If they play e5, I would just play knight d7, still bishop b7, castle, that's fine. We also have pawns we can move now. This is always going to be handy. A5, bishop A6, trades off the dangerous bishop against your king if you want to be safer. So, lots of really good options here. But yeah, it's all, it almost always goes like this. We had a game just earlier where they took, played bishop check, and I was saying, yeah, we just go here. I mean, this stuff is never going to be scary. Right? There's just no, there's just no threats. Rook e8, rook b8, same thing, and you know, a lot of people after rook b8 play b3 and get into real serious trouble on the c file. Okay, Sicilian. We'll wait and see which one he plays. So far, looks like the main line stuff we're gonna take and hit him with the timeout of knight c6. 
Knight c3, well, queen c7 is the next move. a6 is the move after that. And remember, the point is to set up b5, bishop b7, rook c8, and you know maybe the knight comes out. We'll have to see from there, but these are the next couple moves. If the knight captures, I'll probably take back with the queen at this point. For the most part, we don't take with the d-pawn, almost never. And we take with the b-pawn sometimes, but once the queen is here, you're always fine to play queen takes c6. It's really having to think here, I wonder why. I don't really know what he could be thinking about. It's time to just develop. Yeah, there you go. That wasn't hard. Bishop b2, let's continue with our plan, right? b5 and bishop b7. b5 is a nice move because, you know, it even threatens b4, so he's got to keep himself on his toes there. a3 plan. All right. Queen d2. Oh, this move looks just fine. All the time after, um, uh, after knight takes, remember, we're going to be planning this queen takes move and now uh, after bishop f3 i don't think the next move will be too surprising but obviously with e5 clearly threatened we need to do something right we can't just sit there and take that so i like this if e5 i'll just trade uh, bishop there looks like d6 can uh, can be played as a reaction and yeah, let's go d6 Bishop e7. Again, e5, maybe we could take, but also bishop takes f3. Okay, rook d1. I think it's time to take that back. Or, sorry, yeah. <laughs> Mirror that move. Basically, he goes rook there, I go rook here type of thing. I'm still on the lookout for e5, but it doesn't look that dangerous because bishop takes f3, hits the, hits the rook, right? So, not super dangerous. Bishop b7 in castle. But he's gone all in on this uh, pawn here, right? Like, every single move has been to attack the pawn, so he kind of needs this plan to work out. The one thing I do need to be careful of is bishop e7, e5, and, you know, just a lot of things can start to be taken. So, keeping that in mind, I'm actually now looking at knight d7. I mean, to be honest, there's nothing really wrong with this, right? Yeah, should be quite fun. Let's go. Let's not, uh, not work ourselves up. I, I think knight d7 is a good move, but I would argue that it's a little bit too... Uh, it's not simple enough. That's the best way to put it. Bishop b7 is simple. It's like, okay, e5 is going to happen at some point. It's going to have to take... And keep this defended, right? Have to. Um, rook takes. Our moves present themselves very nicely because we must take this way, right? There's no option to take any other way. Right? Every single, <laughs> every single thing that I just did was forced. So it's actually a lot easier to play when your opponent plays in a way where you have to respond with forcing moves. Takes. Okay, he doesn't want to take. I think let's go ahead and take this. Um, yeah, always up for doubling my opponent's pawns. <laughs> well, I said I'm always up for doubling them. Definitely up for doubling a pair. So rook c8 should put a lot of pressure on these guys here and you can see how we're able to and this is truly why right here like i could play this and go take this pawn but i'm just gonna play this pawn move just to illustrate something um but yeah this right here is basically why double pawns are so bad as you can see our rook just controls every single pawn advance that white might consider What's this rook doing? Well, it's stuck playing def defense here. So we can just roll our king up, bring our rook over. Like, we can do whatever we want here. But double pawns are 
so bad for a reason. Double isolated pawns. And now every single pawn is stuck. Not a single pawn can move. Uncomfortable. This guy has been thinking at like weird moments. I don't really know how to describe it, but he just kind of spends like a lot of time randomly. Did I disconnect, right? That's what I'm wondering. Anytime like a moment where you're not actually sure why your opponent stopped moving, they stop moving. The first thing I think of is, damn, did I just DC? Start to get concerned. Okay, luckily, no worries. I guess he just didn't have a move, but yeah. Not a single pawn can move here. And it's crazy, I'm not even up a pawn in this position, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. What do you guys think the evaluation of this position is? So I've told you how good I think it is for black, but what do you think the eval is? And material is dead even, completely even. Plus, what are you guys doing with plus? You guys think white's better? Good God. <laughs> It's very winning. It's very winning. This position is to the degree of winning of being up a rook. Let's say minus five is, is it the most correct answer. Minus five. Minus five. Being up a full rook. That's how winning it is. The evaluation is minus five. The pawns are equal, but it's minus five. That's when you know your position is bad. Because at some point, you know, we're gonna claim this pawn, we're gonna put our pawn here, our rook can go here, and everything will be defended over here. Just bring our king, push. I mean, it's gonna be nasty. This rook has to stay here defending these two pawns. So like, it just can't move anywhere for the rest of the game. Brutal.